This is not a biography. It is just a short story about Gerardus Hermanus Cronier. It is a tale that must be told before it dissolves into the mists of time. A story of courage and character and the will to succeed despite impediments such as lack of money or opportunity. Gerard grew up on a farm in the Orange Free State in the Union of South Africa just after the Anglo-Boer War. During the war, the English burned down everything. Crops, farmhouses, felt, everything. After the war, the farmers had to start from scratch and had a hard time just to sustain their families. Gerard wanted to be a farmer. But as a ninth of eleven children, of whom eight were sons, he knew that the odds were against him from ever being able to farm for himself. Gerard decided to educate himself in the United States of America, but had no money for passage on a ship, so he worked his passage on a cattle ship, caring for the animals and sweeping dung. He did the same for his passage back to South Africa. In Iowa, he washed dishes to pay for his board and tuition. Cronier attended classes at the Iowa State University from 1920 to 1923 and returned home in 1924 with an MSc degree in animal husbandry. While still in America, he landed a position as the first information officer in the Department of Agriculture in the Union of South Africa. In the following years, Gerard got promoted a number of times and occupied the position of Assistant Director of Soil Conservation and Extension for the Free State at the time of his death in 1954. He was only 55 years old. After he returned to his homeland, Gerard first lived in Harrismith, moved to Bethlehem and then to Senegal before he was transferred to Bloemfontein in 1946. Over the years, he bought several parts of farms in the Senegal district and united them into the farm that he called Goosens, which was his mother's maiden name. Probably no farmer today will remember or know the name of Gerard Cournier, but he played a huge role in the agriculture in the Orange Free State. Much of his knowledge and teachings are still used in agriculture today. Um Gerard, as he was fondly known, persuaded the farmers to plough contours instead of straight furrows. He taught them how to prevent soil erosion and how to rehabilitate eroded areas. He was an energetic and tireless champion of soil conservation. Gerard suggested to farmers in the Fuchsburg district to plant their corn a month later than they used to, which resulted in the crops receiving rain at the right time. As an expert on livestock breeds, he often officiated as judge at agricultural shows. In November 1946, various agricultural organizations in Senegal penned a letter to him, Gerard, in which they thanked him for the services that he had rendered for agriculture in the Orange Free State in general and for Senegal in particular. They thanked him for his enthusiasm and selflessness, for the fact that he was the founder of farmers' organizations and agricultural fellowships, and that the Northern Free State was at that stage seen as the best developed area for livestock in the country. Gerard also facilitated in having a new post office, court and offices, and a police station and jail built in Senegal. In the letter he was lauded for his humility, his civility towards all people, and his conscientiousness. The writers ended by saying that he was an inspiration to all. In primary school we learned about soil erosion and the importance of preventing and rehabilitating erosion. I did not know then that I was learning information that my grandfather had been teaching. It was only about a decade later that my grandmother told me the story of my grandfather. It is now more than half a century later and I have probably forgotten a large part of the history, but the lesson is clear. Gerhardus Hermanus Cronier wanted to be a farmer. Although he grew up in the chaos and poverty after the Anglo-Boer War, he did not claim to be a victim of his circumstances. He did not sit back and rely on handouts. He made a plan, worked hard, and was not above shoveling shit to attain his goal. He then returned to his homeland and helped his compatriots to become better and more successful farmers. I am a grandfather myself now. 
I tell the story of Opa Gerard Kronje to my grandchildren and hope that they in turn will tell it to their grandchildren. I believe that it is a story worth telling.